Hey, everybody, how's it going? And welcome to another episode of the Impact Podcast. My name is Jeff Welsh, and I'm the co-founder and president here at Impact Results in Morgantown, West Virginia. And we have another exciting episode here with Bijan. I decided to bring Bijan in again this week. Hey, how's it going, man? Good. Hello. How are you? Glad to be back. Well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's um it's starting to get to be fall time here. As you can see, I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt as opposed to t-shirt or polo. It's getting a little bit chillier. So we're phasing into a new time of year. How about how's the how's the weather on your end? Oh yeah, it's getting really cold here. Like I mean, I'm in I'm in my sweater. But yeah, it's like uh raining and gross outside today. The leaves oh. are falling. I have a tree that's like halfway dead already. So it's <laughs> it's we're getting yeah. there. It's yeah, fall. I have, mixed, I have mixed emotions about this time of year. I partially like it for a lot of the activities, but at the same time, I'm not excited about the winter coming up, but it is what yeah. it is, right? Yep. Yep. But anyhow, so, all right. So the what we've decided to do here, guys, is, is that in uh, last week was the beginning of a series of episodes, not just with the podcast, but in a lot of the content that we're creating right now. We're talking about Black Friday specifically. That's the that's the big talk of the season. This is our biggest time of year. This is the the time of year where we can do the most for our clients, or and our clients honestly they they do the best in Q4 out of out of the remainder of the year. So clearly, being in an advertising agency, we're here to help them grow, and as they succeed, we succeed. So for those of you that are not as familiar with the things that you need to do during this time of the year with Black Friday in regards to targeted ad campaigns and things of that nature, I mean, there's a lot to it. I know we're actually almost at the end of September. We've got a week left in September. The beginning of October is like when we really start to kick some things off. And um, that's when we, and I know that sounds like early, right, for Christmas, but it's really not because Black Friday is at the end of the next month in November. And in order to get great results for our clients, we have to start as far out as possible in um, in regards to our ad campaigns. And so we're going to talk about the actual campaigns themselves, but kind of to continue upon what we talked about last week is we want to talk about, you know, five tips that boost conversion rates, right? Because... I, it, you know, it doesn't make any, it doesn't help matters if you're able to develop a successful campaign and drive traffic to a site to try to increase conversions, make more sales. If you don't have your website working well and optimized, and that's why we have BGN in here today. Yeah. So like uh, to expand on that, like, um, so uh, we we've done a lot of conversion rate tests and have a lot of data based on, you know, millions of users and, uh, you know, we've worked a lot with e-commerce stores and figuring out, you know, the best way to have that user, you know, convert and actually purchase your product. Um, and so, you know, these tips, while, you know, they're great for Black Friday, they're also great for just, you know, every every day, June 3rd, you know. Um, uh, so uh, these these tips are, you know, our go to's before, uh, you know, we send traffic to any website nowadays. Um because they've every time we've done a conversion rate test using these uh, elements, they always win. They always increase conversions or average order value or revenue or whatever. They always help your website. Um, and so to get right into it, uh, the first the first tip, first element, first thing you should try implementing into your website, um, it's something called like a sticky add to cart button. Um, and this is actually for mobile devices. Um, not necessarily, I mean, you can add it to, to like the, your desktop website as well, but it's more effect, most effective for mobile devices. Um, and you have to remember that like mobile devices take up to 50 to 70% of, of web traffic nowadays. And so it's very, very important to make sure you're your one, your entire website should be responsive. Um, and two, you need to make sure that it's easy to navigate. Um, because with mobile, with mobile uh, websites, you can end up having really, really long web pages because all of your content starts stacking, you know, on top of each other. Um, and that that's even double for product pages when you have, you know, product descriptions, prices, uh, different options, different settings, and 
um, customer reviews, you know, the page can start getting really, really long with all these extra information. Um, and so as the user is going through the website, you know, they might get lost, they might lose track where they are on the web page. And so what the sticky add to cart button does is um, it can do one of two things. So if your product doesn't have any options, right, if it's just um, there's a price and you click add to cart and you you want to take it to checkout, um, that's simple enough. You know, with the sticky add to cart button, that button stays on the screen no matter where you are when you're scrolling. Mm -hmm. And so whenever that user decides like, okay, they're reading the description and then they're like, okay, yes, this is the product that I want. This is the product that I need. They don't have to scroll back up. They can just hit add to cart and it'll be added to their cart. Um, and, you know, depending on your preference, you can redirect the user to the cart page afterwards to get them going to check out faster, or maybe there's continue shopping, you know, um, after that, there, there's other options to to consider. But with, with the sticky add to cart, you're at least getting that initial, like, immediate uh, feedback from the user. Um, and it, it always helps. Uh, uh, I don't have the actual, like, percentage of, like, the average of every test, uh, every store we've done, because we, we do it on every store. But we, we definitely see... Um, I want to say it's, like, between 10 to 20% uh, conversion increase. Um, from from what I remember uh, of when we were testing these things rather than just implementing them, um, and that's that's sort of like how confident we are with, with these with these uh, tests as well, um, because we we don't we don't even like uh, use test data anymore. We're just we just implement these because they're they're so um, they're so effective. Well, I think I think it's important to note one of the things that you said a couple of things here that come to mind. One. I know we had mentioned this is, you know, these are tips for Black Friday season, but honestly, these are tips for every season, like you mm -hmm. had mentioned earlier. And, um, you know, when you talk about, uh, we actually, we do use data, but like for yeah. brand new clients that, that come in, things like this are adjustments like this to the user interface it are, we know that they're going to be wins regardless, you know, for, because mm -hmm. a lot of times you know, most, most of our clients haven't implemented these five tips. Like they're things that they haven't even thought of because maybe they don't have a full-time developer on staff or web web guy focused on UI design and things like that. So I just wanted to make that, that clear is, is that yeah. they're, they're easy wins. So we implement them immediately. So then, yeah. you know, of course, then the client feels comfortable with us because it, we've got, we've got wins all of a sudden. Yeah, we, we just have that backlog of knowledge no, saying right. like, okay, yeah, we, we've we tested these thoroughly and we're 99.99% we're sure that it is it is an absolute win um, regardless of, of where you're at. Um, and sort of to, you know, go on to the, the second one. Um, and th this is, you know, sticking with, with that product page and making sure that product page is as optimized as possible is featuring uh, user testimonials, not necessarily reviews. And reviews are helpful, but I think reviews um, are starting to lose their um, authenticity these days. I think a lot mm -hmm. of people are just like, is this a real review? Is this fake? You know, right. you just don't know. Um, and so sort of taking like, um, you know, the reviews you do know are real or the re reviews from customers that you talk to personally and, um, displaying them as you know testimonials and like block quotes or like in a different way that's not just like a review widget with like five stars like oh it's a great product um having like you know something that looks like oh a person actually said this about this product um this this has always done us very well and it, you it can either be like dynamic or even static so like you don't need to be constantly adding new uh, reviews or changing out the reviews on these pages um, because a lot of the time, you know, your, your product is, um, I mean, not every product, but a lot of products are going to be, you know, one-time purchases. So people aren't going to buy it, come back and see the same reviews. They're going to see those reviews and then buy it. And then, you know, if they want to come back to your store, they're probably going to be buying another product, you know? Um, yeah, for sure. unless it, unless it's, you know, a consumable or something. And then in that case, you might want to look at more dynamic testimonials that change out over time. 
Um, well, I know, I know just based off of our personal experience from an agency's <laughs> perspective. Um, I mean, collecting testimonials are always good. I mean, it's, and we've never crafted testimonials to just make ourselves look good. I just don't believe in that. That's not ethical. I mean, but it is easy for a lot of businesses to be able to do that, to grab a picture online and write something fancy and put it on a page. That being said, like, you know, be ethical guys, like do, do, do your best, reach out to your happy customers, continue to make it part of your process to continue to have con um, conversation with them after they've purchased with the objective of trying to get them to do, I mean, essentially a call to action, right? The call to action is, hey, do you mind sending us, uh, you know, uh, you know, a, a review about what of the product that you purchased? But ultimately, I think the best thing, and we, and it's a challenge for us. I'm gonna be honest, like, you know, ultimately having a video is is the best because it's really kind of hard to fake video. You know, people will say, oh, well, you can just use AI for that, but you can tell you can tell the difference between something that's AI generated and human generated yeah yeah um yeah with the video testimonials like it's definitely better to have the the actual video testimonials but you know a lot of customers are not going to be like oh yeah this product was so good yeah. i'm going to record a video of myself right. saying yeah let's buy this um and then you need like permission to put them on their website and stuff but yeah, you know there's stuff. If if you have like a, I would say that that's better for like if you have like an influencer um type of deal or something like oh there's like a, a someone with a lot of followers that use uses your product you know reach out to them maybe they can give you a video testimonial um you know it's it's really just about building that authenticity that authority that hey you know your product is a good product and actual humans use this product and enjoy it as well um. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's all about that authority really. Um, cause you know, people want to buy from a website, uh, that's, that feels trustworthy. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it all, it all boils down to anything in marketing is knowing, liking and trusting who, whomever it is that you're transacting with, especially if it involves your hard earned money, right? Like you've got to feel, mm -hmm. feel confident that what you're buying is going to solve your problem and be be comfortable with that so these yeah. are the type of things that definitely help me when i'm going into buy i mean i know when i go to amazon one of the first things i look at is how many stars <laughs> are on whatever product i'm looking at if it has anything yeah. less than four typically i don't buy it unless like yeah. unless that's the only option available you know yeah but see that's that's why people use a lot of fake reviews and that's why the the real test the the testimonial widgets look uh feel it sorry look and feel more authentic um because yeah when you click on the stars and start reading the reviews it's like oh are some of these are humans but some of these are bots or some mm -hmm. of these are fake or you know um and it's getting harder and harder to tell um and then especially with ai you know i'm sure there's ai tools that just flood with good reviews yeah. for your product uh yeah, um, absolutely and so you know just being able to stand out is is what's what's really important nowadays um, but yeah, so let's moving on to tip number three. Um, uh, I would, uh, again, sticking on the product page, a lot of these things are going to be on the product page because that's where users are going to be spending the most amount of time on your website, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I think there's a lot to be said about making your website easy to navigate and making products easy to find, but, uh, a lot of our focus is, is making sure that once they find their product, they're they're convinced to buy it um mm. as quickly as possible and so one thing we found is you know making sure that the friction on that page is as little as possible making sure that everything to use on that page is as easy as possible um so the user doesn't get frustrated and so the user can get information easily um and so the way, one way we've solved this is by changing how product options are displayed. So on a lot of websites, you see product options are displayed as drop-down menus. Um, and so like what a drop-down menu is, uh, I'm sure most people, most people know, but it's of like, course. you know, a, a little box that has a piece of text in it. You click on the box and then there's a bunch of other options um, that you can click on. And then you select whatever option you're looking for and then the drop down closes and then you see your option that's now selected. 
Um, so the issue with this, especially on, you know, e-commerce and product pages, like that's fine for, for a form. Um, but with product options, what's happening there is the user is clicking what one, two, one, two multiple three times. times. Yeah. Multiple yeah. times. Um, and before they even click, they don't even have access to all the information. So even if they, so they'll read like, okay, here's the option for color. You have red selected. Well, what other options do you even have available? They have to click on it, read through all those options. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we we like to do is change from drop downs to just buttons or to like a, a yeah. radio checkbox or something like that. Um, because this way the user can immediately scan the options and see, okay, they immediately have the color I want. They have the size I want. They have whatever option available that I want as a, as a customer. Um, and then on top of that, not only is the information much more easily accessible, now you're reducing it from two or three clicks to one click per option. It's like color, one click, size, one click, add to cart, done. Um, which reminds yeah. me, I, I forgot. I forgot to mention with the sticky add to cart. <laughs> back, uh, to tip ba one. back to sticky add to cart with with product options. Um, it, if you're scrolling around the page, you can you can click that sticky add to cart button, and it'll scroll you back up to the product options. So you don't have to, um, uh, you know, as a user, scroll all the way back up. Um, but yeah, back, sorry. Sorry, I just as I was talking about the product options, I was like, oh, I it's forgot to good. mention that with number no, one. No, it's all good. I mean, that's um, the, that's the nature when you get into these conversations. You say, oh, I needed to reference that other thing yeah, here because yeah. I'm actually physically going through the process in my head. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah. So so with the buttons, it reduces friction. It adds accessibility. It's it just makes it so much more easier and performant for the user. Um. And yeah, again, it's it's something that we've seen really great. Uh, conversion rate increases too. Um, yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, all of these tips that we're giving here today are just, I mean, decreasing user friction, right? The easiest path to getting paid. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I hate to say it that way, but that's what it boils down to, right? Like, mm -hmm. so, I mean, it's just like if you go to the grocery store, if you've got to run, if you got to run around, uh, you know, a maze to get to the cash register, you're just not going to, you're just not going to buy your stuff there because it's too difficult. So yeah, yeah. all of and these are yeah, tips to, to make that easier, really. Yeah. And it's not even necessarily making it like easier to get paid or like convincing the customer to buy anything. It's like, okay, we're, we're simply making the website better, you know? Um, it's, it's, it's just like, if the website is easier to use, it's better, you know? For sure. Um, yeah. I mean, not only it, for the user, but like the other thing it does too, right? That user, if they're having difficulty going through and purchasing the thing they want, they're going to tell all their friends about it. Oh, I mm -hmm. didn't have a good experience here. So, I mean, yeah. there's that too. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely just, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, you know, sort of psychologically, uh, I mean, think about how many websites you go to that like take too long to load and you're just like, it's literally a frustrating experience. Um, and so whenever you go search something similar later and you see that website, you're not going to go there. You're like, oh, that that website sucks. Um, yeah, you're going to yeah, try yeah. something else. Exactly. Um, and so like, it's not even necessarily about that first time, that first interaction with a buyer. Maybe a buyer is just doing some research on your product for now and they're planning on coming back later. Well, if your website isn't a good experience or they find another website that sells a similar product with a better experience, they're going to go for that better website. Sure. Um, and again, this is something like I like to preface more and more now is, you know, the Internet, should you shouldn't act like your website is different from your physical storefront. Like you should put as much time and effort as you do into making your physical storefront like a good experience because that's important to the customer. The experience is important. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if you think back to, you know, I mean, gosh, the internet's, you know, buying online, it's been around for quite some time now. I, I remember in its infancy, but like the reality of it is people purchase online because they don't want to go to the stores anymore. I don't know about the towns that you guys live in, but like in, in our small town here in Morgantown, you know, the malls are terrible. Like not only do you not want to go to what you know, a place like that, but like, it's just inconvenience, right? Like if you can walk around with your phone, 
make a purchase you just you just want to get it over with real quick because that's one less thing you have to do mm -hmm. so yeah especially if you know what you're looking for too oh yeah um, and especially with mobile like pre-mobile the way it is now with smartphones i mean we would actually have to physically go and sit down at our computer which you know honestly back in those days was less laptops and more like desktops so it's e e even easier now. I mean, it's not uncommon for me to be driving around town to pick up my kids and think of something. And as soon as I stop, I'm buying it. And for my phone, boom, done. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, it's, um, times change. Yeah. Times change quick. And so like, um, when I still see like outdated websites, I'm like, guys, come on, it's 2024. Let's almost 2025. Let's get, let's get with the times. Right. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so 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 cool. So you use buttons instead of drop downs. Um mm -hmm. super super valuable. What what else do you have on on the list? Um so now moving away from the product page. Those are those are my favorite to do on the product page. Um but before you hit the product page, a lot of the times you're going to be on like the category or collection pages. Um so what we like to do is sort of highlight the best products of those collections, or maybe um, as a business owner, you're like, okay, I want to highlight these new products, or um, these are the best sellers, or, um, you know, there, there's certain products that uh, you want to focus on to sell, whether it's high margin uh, products or, you know, new products, like I said. One thing that we found is really, really helpful is just showcasing those at the top of your collection pages or category pages. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so like one of our clients, I was running a split test for them. Um, you know, it was just a normal, normal category page. It just listed all of their products for that, for that category. I just ran a script that selected, it was like, um, two two or three of the products from their list that uh were like their customizable products um and so they're higher margin they're uh um and but because they were in like the middle of a list they're harder for users to to get to and mm -hmm. so what my script does is it looks for those products and it moves them or it doesn't move them it copies them into like a new its own little uh section its own little row at the top and it's like featured products or like bestsellers or whatever um and so this is really really helpful um and with this uh, specific uh split test this increased revenue not conversion rate revenue by 4.7 percent uh for this client 4.7 um, percent yes yeah just by just by showing the products that they already had in like a different way oh wow and so um yeah, I mean, it, it was it was it was honestly a shock to me. I was like, I was not expecting it uh, to increase that much revenue um, because like they didn't do anything else. We and for me, it, it took five, 10 minutes. So it's literally like these really tiny things that take so little time. Um, yeah, I think it, it took me less than 30 minutes to like, uh, you know, think about how I was going to implement it code it out and actually add it to the website and then uh the test um i think i ran the test for like two months or something it, it was think... it was a long test but i was like i just saw the numbers keep going up and i was like this is crazy i'm like that you and... know what that reminds me of? that reminds me of when you go to walmart or target or anything like that where they they have the end caps right like oh mm -hmm. we we want to promote these donuts or these flowers yes. we're, they're normally in the donut section but no we're going to put the halloween donuts at the end of the aisle where mm -hmm. most of the i mean really right it's it's about putting the things that you want to showcase and honestly the smartest clients of ours do it when you're putting the ones with the best profit margin on the in the in the most highly trafficked area to mm -hmm. increase those conversions because rather than putting them at the bottom of the barrel right yeah yeah or just like in the mix with everything else yeah it's yeah just, that's what i mean yeah you know you know what your customer wants so show them show them the best option for them that mm -hmm. um and yeah no it's it was honestly and you know we, we've done it um done this test for other clients before um 
and it's it's been successful but this this one the this most recent client was just a, a big almost almost five percent revenue increase from just from oh God, nothing pretty much yeah and another, another thing you can do with that too is not just a high profit more um more profitable products but like i just i was walking into i keep using walmart walmart with my kids the, the, the other day and i walked by and they had like a big bucket full of uh seasonal soap you know mm -hmm. or whatever and it's 99 cents whatever I mean, yeah. so if you've got overstock, like an abundance of something, maybe you have products from the previous season that you want to get rid of, put it up front so people can just add it to the cart. Yeah. I and mean, it's just Do like when you go sales. through the, yeah, the register. How many times when you go through the register, me personally, have I, like, I've added a pack of M&Ms to my, mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't go in the store for M&Ms, but all of a sudden I've added a product or two and, and you know, your, your exactly. receipt, your ticket is, ends up being more. Exactly. Small, tiny up sales. Yep. Yeah, for sure. So, um, well, yeah, that, that's a, that's a really interesting way to think about it. Five percent is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, no, I well, the reason again, I keep saying I'm shocked by it is because again, it was like they had these products already, and it was just displaying them better, um, mm -hmm. displaying them in a more consumable way that you know reduces friction. It makes it easier for the user. It makes the website better. Um, and so yeah, we're we're working on other improvements for that website, and so it's 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 pretty cool. That's yeah, pretty. Um, awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so for the for the last tip, the fifth and final tip, and this is this is gonna come out as like the most basic tip, but it's also the most important, and yeah. it is to offer free shipping, and that is especially true on Black Friday. Mm -hmm. Um, even even if it's free shipping with a threshold like oh spend fifty dollars or seventy five dollars free shipping is like psychologically the best offer you can offer any customer mm. um and i think i think it's because of that sort of upfront value like when you add an, a product to cart you're like okay this product is going to cost me you know fifty dollars and then you go to check out and you're like shipping costs 15 no way like <laughs> and so like a, a customer will always be like oh i'd rather pay 65 dollars plus free shipping <laughs> rather than 50 dollars plus 15 dollars shipping right um right and with black friday you know you definitely want to do you know bonus offers like oh buy two products and get get free shipping or something like that Right. Um, but it is, it is really that like human psycho psychology thing where it's just like, you know, you're, you're missing out or you're, you're not convincing them in the right way. If you're not offering free shipping. I remember the days when free shipping, I mean, so, so you're right. This is the, one of the most basic, but, and it's also one of the ones that have been around for a long time now, but I remember the days online when Amazon started to do free shipping with prime or whatever. And then all of a sudden we're like, everybody was like, oh my God, I'm going to go buy from them. Well, I mean, they, you know, they, they sucked from the market into, into their platform and in the smaller businesses, because I've been doing e-commerce for a long time, man, like 20, 20 years in some capacity, I've worked for somebody or myself doing this stuff. And I just remember the smaller businesses being like, well, we can't afford to do that. Well, you can't afford to not do that because in the in a world where people are not going to drive and spend their gas to go to the store anymore, and that and it's super convenient, you just need to you just need to adjust your pricing, and that's going to be a little bit um, hurtful. It's going to hurt a little bit in in the initial forefront of the process. But over time, the whole market adjusts accordingly, and you've you've made up for that within the pricing of your product. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think, you know, like you said, it, it feels like there's like this initial hurt value, but I, I do think like, you know, there there's going to be the cus the customers that are going to be like, oh, but I get free shipping, so it's like fine. Um, and with, with increasing your price, you know, that gives you a little bit more wiggle room with, you know, other, other sales and other discounts and other ways of yeah. convincing people like, Hey, my, my product is worth, worth buying, you know? So if you're charging $65, um, or even 70, so you have the extra $5 to be like, mm -hmm. Hey, get, get $2 off your, your purchase or whatever, um, to sort of like make that, that perceive the, the perception of your deal, your offer better. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know that's um definitely definitely a big one. I mean, I I 
myself included, it, it's rare do I purchase anything without free shipping anymore. Yep. I mean, I, I've, unless I've that's purchased... the only option. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Or there are some things too, like I. So I, I've, I'm pretty into fitness and and working out and things like that. And I and I have a really nice home gym, but like I'm not gonna want to go spend money on shipping for a product that for weights, for example, dumbbells. I mean, it's gonna cost me more equal to or just or more than the product we're shipping. So in those type mm -hmm. of situations, I am willing to drive to the store or buy through Facebook Marketplace or whatever. But if you've got something where the weight of the physical product is not that much, then I I mean you're in my personal opinion, you're crazy not to offer free shipping. Yeah, yeah. Um but like if you so if anyone wants to learn more about like these tips, we wrote about it in a in a blog post on our website. Um so that'll be in the the description of this this video. Um but otherwise, like yeah, it, again, these are not just for Black Friday. These are gonna help out your store any time of the year, uh any day, any time, you know, um, and worldwide. Like it's these are these are what we found for from all of our split tests and all of our data that like very effective um and have always increased conversion or revenue. Yeah. And it's it's just a it's just a really good starting point. So if you haven't taken mm -hmm. these type of things into consideration and they're not that difficult to implement. I mean they're pretty pretty straightforward. So like you know, a bunch of our clients were already, if if they ha haven't implemented this type of stuff already, we're trying to get that stuff, recommend that it gets taken care of, whether it's us or them, it's only going to make things better. So we've gone over the five tips are implementing a sticky add to cart button on mobile devices, super important there. Um, feature user testimonials on the product page. So get as many people talking as nicely as possible about your product. Use of use of radio buttons instead of drop downs menus in your in your customer op in your custom options, collection page product highlights. So just like the the end cap in your retail store, put them in front, you know, up front at your, at your online end cap, so to speak, and offer free shipping. Those are the five big tips that we're recommending that you guys implement here as soon as possible. You know, to take advantage of the increased traffic you're going to have here real soon yep yep so, so cool all right bgm <clears throat> well thank you so much i mean i know this is a little bit of a shorter episode this time uh, around but i th i think it's super valuable again it's not about how long we can make the episode if we can if we can condense this into 15 minutes that would be awesome i think the value that we're providing you know our 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 audience out there that is seeing this stuff is is really important to us i mean we're always trying to give as much as we can as opposed to take try to help our people out so cool man yep absolutely well thanks a lot guys uh for showing up here on the most recent episode of the impact podcast i know that you guys your time is valuable but we appreciate you guys coming if you haven't had a chance yet go check our website out in the url on screen here think impact with a k.com if you have any questions do not hesitate to reach out to us put put your questions in the comments of this youtube post anything you can do to to you know make your experience and your online store presence better and increase conversions that's what we're here to help you do so i appreciate you guys and we'll see you next week on the next episode of the impact podcast take care